10 out of 10. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot. Heading straight into the Worry series had me worried because of how much I anticipated both of these two projects in which, by the way, Moon Studios' first debut, meaning this is their first ever development, so imagine how much more the developers could end up doing with future titles if they can make something this gorgeous. So what made me skip the overall review to just give it its rating? Say no more as I further discuss on the Ori franchise, a platforming adventure Metrovania game published by Microsoft Studios, an Xbox exclusive title which later released on the Switch. However, the physical copies released recently that came with a couple of things including the soundtrack that I'm just dying to talk about already. But quick heads up, this will be a little different from my review since this is 2 in 1. So I had to change a couple of things in order to make it work and it paid off. Someone invited Onion Cutting Ninjas to my home because the way the story approached it's something I have never believed exists in a single franchise that takes next step storytelling that left players with so many emotions because it's that good. There will be spoilers in the beginning in order to further explain on why the Aura series is simply a masterpiece so unless you want to experience the game yourself, <coughs> which you should, then I would recommend you skipping the story of Ori and watch the rest of the video to see or better yet get a glimpse on what to expect from the Ori franchise and to hopefully understand why I believe everyone, and I mean everyone, should play at least once because you will not get another chance. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity, do not, and I mean do not miss it. If I had money like that, I would literally go out my way and buy you either an Xbox or Switch just to experience this project. And no, it won't release on PlayStation because Microsoft and Nintendo pretty much share the majority of their products. And besides, it's an Xbox past studio is rightfully claimed, so yeah. Anyways, I've said enough. Let me explain the story of Ori. Story of Ori begins on the night of a frightening storm. A large tree that is known to be the spirit tree, the protector that brings balance to the forest. The strong wind rips off a leaf as it passes by a creature named Naru. And as the leaf lands, we see Ori, the white spirit guardian, though to be born. Naru proceeds to take Ori in as her own, as a strong connection between the mother and child. An unknown amount of time later, we see this event that wiped out the forest and everything it provides. Naru fails to find any food and returned home to be empty handed. And as what any mother would do is to put their child first before them as Naru gives the last of their apples. Ori notices as the mother is exhausted and tries to find food as she successfully did. She returned and noticed that Naru has died of starvation. As Ori desperately tries to wake up the unmoving mother from her cold helplessly and unfortunately it was too late. An orphan with no reason to stay sets out from her home and into the dense forest. We see Ori become very fragile and tired, struggle through the woods and hope has faded entirely and Ori collapsed. As Ori died, bright lights appeared in which the spirit tree used the last of its light, sensing Ori's death to bring her back to life. To be soon after, you meet this light named Sign to be the source of its light which is the eye of the spirit tree and becomes your guardian as it helps you throughout your journey. Once they've arrived at the spirit tree, Ori learns about what sets this event to be a disaster that left the forest blind without any light that was left to be remained. During the ceremony that was supposed to be the Ori's event, the spirit tree was attacked by a giant owl named Kuro that ripped off the branches that disturbed the balance in which kept the three elements of light a twist of events to soon be revealed the further you progress that which I won't explain since that would lead to some serious spoilers. As for Will of the Wisps, can't say much except it doesn't have much of an impact compared to the blind forest. At least that's what I thought, but shit gets real. I can just sit here and talk about this all day, but I have to keep it professional. I will say that it is twice as powerful as the first installment and brings more to the table on its balanced gameplay. Both Blind Forest and World of the Wisps are equally both on standard projects. I really can't say which I prefer. Critics and community fell in love with both installments of the franchise. It's really not hard to understand, I'll discuss it by later as we progress into the video. 
Another thing I must mention about Will of the Wisps is that a certain event that will have players experience a thrill ride filled with sorrow because of how much deeper the context of that story truly is. Also seems to have taken some inspiration to Hollow Knight because now there is fast travel instead of heading to a different warp just to travel. You can now heal without going your ways to find items. NPCs who each takes part in a role and I love them all because each and every one isn't so pale. Well, the Wisps overall did a much better job of taking it to the next step instead of repeating yesterday's work to be today's work. Why do you think it took the developers 5 years to make a sequel just for a franchise that has everything on what everyone should want in a video game? But in my honest, most humble opinion, I believe the Ori series are the greatest Metrovania games. It doesn't matter who came first or what did first. After finishing both installments, even a second run on the blind force, I still can't believe something like this even exists because it's that good. The franchise will take you on an adventurous quest where you're going to witness some of the most devastating and heartbreaking scenes and events in all of gaming. Am I saying this because I love Ori? Well, yeah, it's part of it. That's pretty obvious. Otherwise, what would be the point of reviewing anything at this point? Now, not everything in a video game is perfect. Some of you know how I feel about puzzles in the game in general. I am not a huge fan of solving shit. I don't understand, but Ori and the Blind Forest almost completely changed my mind. Because it wasn't so problematic solving. It offered hints, even clues that gives you an idea on problem solving. And they aren't so boring since the environments are puzzles. But oh wait, never mind, Will the Wisp made it complicated. But it's not their fault. Really, it's either that I'm retarded or I'm just simply retarded. That's the only other explanation to it because I usually end up realizing at the last minute since the answers are right in front of my dumb looking face. In all of my hardest work, there really is nothing bad I can say about both the Blind Force and Will of the Wisp. Both these projects from beginning to end left me with my mind blown on how much development and production it took to make something that can give chills throughout both of these installments. And it's not because of its glorious gameplay nor the graphics, it's the story, environments, details, explorations, characters, motion sense, the fact that many games talk about the importance of life and saving the world but fails to show why these things really matter. And out of all these things I've just said, nothing more gets to be in this game than the soundtrack and oh my holy fuck. One of the greatest original soundtracks I've heard in all of gaming, right up there with Bloodborne, Super Castlevania 4, and well, most of Miyazaki's work. But when it comes to that point when the theme fits perfectly for particular scenes, Ori does it best with the intensity most uplifting heroic you'll ever hear while roaming around not just one, but both installments. Of course I died a couple of times just because half the time I had to stop playing the game just to hear the soundtrack. No seriously, it got to a point where I literally stopped just to appreciate the tone of these tracks that fits with the climax and atmosphere. It's amazing and I fucking love it. One of my favorite tracks from the series has to be Light of Nimble along with Escaping the Ruins. Escape sequences in general has some of the best pieces in the franchise because of how active and energetic they can be. I just love the tone of the achievements feel like hope never left your side because you're achieving great to do more good. I just wish a time machine actually exists to go back in time just to experience these games again for the first time. Or just erase my memories to make it more simple. But my favorite out of all of these has to be completing the circle. This track plays when you access the last ability in the game. And my jaw dropped. I completely lost it. At that moment, that's when I said not only the Ori series is the best Metrovania project, but without a doubt one of the greatest games of all time. It doesn't get any better than this because it can't. It's when video games are no longer games because they simply become art. There are two kinds of people which are those who haven't played the game and those who agree on the topic. Another thing before I get on the topic since there are so many great characters. I'm only going to talk about the Blind Forest because I don't want to spoil the Will of the Wisp as a sequel. Be aware that this is still a two part review, so unless if you'd already played both Moon Studios installments, we good. If not, sit down quietly and listen to a great character development. Ori is a white spirit guardian who in which leads that pack of guardians since she's the last of her kind after being slaughtered in the event of massacre. A character who is the light and save those who are blinded by hatred. Ori is my gal, get it because she's a girl and most people would think it's a boy? I'll stop now. 
Yes, Ori is the main character, and if they have a plushie, I might go buy me one of her because that's how much I love Ori. A mother who holds dear to her child gives comfort to her home and gives a warm welcome and introduction, further progressing to the story. Naru is what everyone will want as a mother that provides shelter and care in a corrupted blind force. Love Naru's character indeed. Similar to most characters throughout the series, Gumo is the last of its kind. Gumons were wiped out because of this devastating event that led him towards selfish acts in which later, an item he would take which you would need to further progress. When it comes to change of heart and character development, Gumo has to be my personal favorite. A creature who embraced the darkness who can even end up being a great supporting character. The Warrior series is a very challenging game, even if you set the difficulty on easy mode, nothing will change. I normally play on normal to see if this is right for the average player. I say it's fair if you try hard enough. I love the puzzles in the series, no game has ever made me enjoy them because it actually has things to work around with that keeps the player invested and most importantly balanced. Everything is so well detailed that it makes a grown man want to cry. Every sound of his piece, every single moment that includes the settings of the narrative directs, the sound and feel to what beauty is because there is so much to do specifically in World to Wisp. So many side quests, abilities, and silly characters you will see the more you complete these journeys. What I love that World to Wisp done is every time you complete a very challenging battle, you gain it. HP, meaning it will increase every time challenging foes await you through the main courses. Now instead of using energy to save your game every time, now in Will of the Wisps you can use them to heal in battle which is a huge improvement. Instead of going area to area searching for extra life energy, it's much more needed in the second installment considering that it's twice as hard as Blind Force since now there are bosses to encounter. Speed on Bob bosses, I'm so excited to talk about it. Something that Blind Forest was missing that Will of the Wisps adds are boss battles, and I fucking love them all. Not a single one of them were a hit or miss, even this one boss that was generic, but the fact that there are even bosses in this installment, I didn't care how they turned out. But most of them are very well designed and outstanding. But out of all these bosses, there is one that stands out to me than the rest of them. Not only my personal favorite, but arguably the hardest and the environment that await before you, more of the spider. One of many reasons why I enjoy this battle is because of the lore as much as I love Koela and Shrieks, and both of those really hit me as much as Mona's. What was missing for me is a challenge, and this fight was frustrating. Similar to Kuro, Mora was corrupted by the darkness along with her children, becoming tainted with corrupted fungus that turned her hostile. A mother trapped as she desperately cries for help as her children stands to watch helplessly who couldn't bear. That's when Ori realizes the pain Mora's in which is why you head for another direction of the fight and I love every second of this fight from the gameplay standpoint, the intensity, how energetic it stands out from other battles, the challenge and the environment in which to move to this area to avoid anything at all times. And after reviewing this, Ori will no longer be a game to me. From this point on, it's going to be considered art because it's just beautiful to admire and appreciate as an underrated masterpiece. I'm going out my way to buy the Vinyl Space Projects. I have to. The original soundtrack is something I've been listening to for almost an entire month, and I know I was going to like it, but not to a point I became a fanboy for these installments. Something well developed by Moon Studio. If the third installment won't happen, I at least hope we get another project similar to it. A Metrovania platform franchise anyone can hope for. Overall review, play the goddamn game.